Welcome to Gun Thoughts. Welcome to Gun Thoughts. Today we're doing the TP9. What does TP9 stand for? Trash Pistol 9. So what is this anyway? This is the BNT TP9. It is a weird little 9mm subgun PDW thing. It looks pretty cool. But once you start to get handling it and get shooting it, that novelty sort of drains away real fast. The TP9 is a short recoil rotating barrel operated gun, like a lot of those uh, Berettas that everybody loves. Um, Do people love the PX4 Storm? <laughs> everybody loves the PX4 Storm. I know nothing about this gun, but it looks cool. As far as my impressions with this gun, the ergonomics are really, really weird. Uh, it feels like a combination between a Glock pistol and an AR. I actually kind of like the ergos of it. Everything's right here for your strong hand. You've got your safety right here, you've got bolt release right there, and you've got your mag release right here. One thing that we noticed when we were running this thing that we really didn't like is this mag well is just, it's really exactly the size of the mag. It's kind of like an MP5 in that regard and it just makes getting those speed reloads kind of difficult when you're trying to just nail that tiny little hole. My impression of the Ergos is that it is a mix between an AR and a Glock, and I'm too stupid to combine those two together, so I have a really hard time uh, just managing the manual of arms because um, I don't do things goodly. Yikes. The charging handle feels sort of weird. It's sort of a little plasticky, flimsy little thing back here, but it's not terrible, it's usable. The stock iron sights are actually horrible. There's a little front post embedded in here and a tiny little rear peep back here. The TP9 is supposed to be fully ambidextrous, but as far as our ergonomics go, I don't think it's usable for anybody, no matter <laughs> if you're left-handed or right-handed. So how does this thing feel to shoot? It has a really snappy recoil impulse. The good news is it's almost all vertical. So while it's unpleasant, it's controllable. So when this thing was brand new, the trigger was so absurdly heavy that the first time I dry fired it, I thought that the safety was stuck on somehow. It's lightened up pretty considerably, but it's still awful. I'd say that the trigger went from terrible to just really bad. Uh, the travel is ridiculously long and the brake is really mushy so, and, heavy. and heavy. So I found it really easy to be going to shoot and not be pulling the trigger all the way through and thinking the safety was on. And to me, the whole point of having something like this with multiple contact points is to be able to get shots uh, more stable shots at distance and this trigger makes it very difficult to do that and for me I would rather just have a handgun at that point. This trigger is the most trash trigger I've shot in any gun ever. 
This trigger is like taping multiple Glocks together and trying to pull all the triggers at the same time. Shooting it from the bench um, was really, really difficult with this trigger. What made it even harder was the fact that the trigger pull never really felt consistent to me. I don't know if it's the weight of the trigger or if it's the fact that it's a sub gun trigger and it's meant to be on full auto or something. I don't know what it is, but it felt very inconsistent to me. When you're trying to shoot fast, you don't necessarily notice the weight, but you notice just how long the pull is and you notice how long the reset is and that often leads to trigger freeze. When you're trying to shoot accurately off the bench, the trigger feels absurdly heavy and just the pull is just so long. Reliability. It works good. We've shot just about a case through it. It's fed hollow points, uh, flat nose. I mean, basically everything that we had, which is good. Every nine millimeter we've put in it, it's shot. So that's a plus for and it, I guess. And even some 40. <laughs> <laughs> it does have a little recess here on the bolt, which you can uh, bend down, stop what you're doing, bend down, pick up a, a shell case and put it in there and you can use it as a forward assist or just to manipulate the bolt yeah. however you need to. I don't really know much about how accurate a sub gun should be, but this was decent. We had three to four inch groups at 25 yards. HSTs and 115 and 147 grain all had slightly different point of impacts. So if you're gonna be shooting a consistent ammo through here, you might wanna zero it for the ammo that you're gonna use. Um, but seems decent, I guess. So we decided to benchmark the TP9 against another PCC that we run fairly frequently, the MPX. Our PCC benchmarks are a bill drill and an El Presidente drill. What that is, is El Presidente is two, two, two on hip six size targets at 10 yards, a speed reload, and then two, two, two again. A bill drill, we ran at seven yards and it's just from stock on belt, six shots on target as fast as you can. The bill drill and the El Prez are gonna be our benchmarks for how we compare PCCs to one another in the future, or in this case, a trash pistol. <laughs> so we each ran both of these guns once on each drill and we took our hit factor score from each drill which is essentially the points per second that we scored and then we took our average between the three of us for each category. Shooting the build drill with this, um, the splits were slower than what I can do uh, for two reasons, the length or the travel of the trigger and how unpredictable the break is. However, that made the sights settle a lot more because it took forever. And uh, Basically, I, they've forced you to slow down and get your hits with this gun. Yeah. Alprez, like he mentioned, the magwell is hard to nail, so the reload can take a long time if you suck at it. As you're shooting this, the long trigger press really does give you time to let the sights get back on target. With other guns, you really have to control what you're seeing and make sure you're actually seeing the target and breaking the shot on target. With this, you don't have to worry about that. You're gonna spend eons breaking that trigger, <laughs> so you have all the time you want to get a good sight picture. Okay, so what did we learn at the end of the day from benchmarking that and comparing it to something like this? What we learned was, while that gun can be run somewhat effectively, it still just gets blown out of the water by guns like this that have better triggers, better ergonomics, much better recoil impulse, etc. 
To me, this gun is a bastard child between a long gun and a pistol, yet it totally falls flat on... It misses both marks. It, mis it definitely misses both marks, and most of that lies in the trigger. All the advantages that you gain from being able to have multiple points of contact, you lose by having the worst trigger that I've ever shot in a gun. So, overall, it's not a bad gun, but it's not great. And that's what I think about it. So, wrapping up, is this gun something you should buy? Probably not, unless the only reason you're getting it is to flex on the gram and you don't actually want to shoot it. Um, we did sort of find that we got some sort of sick enjoyment out of shooting it by the end of filming this. At the end of the day, this gun still looks kind of cool, but is it a good gun? Not really. Should you buy one? Probably not. My final thoughts on this gun are that I'm not really a big fan of it. I don't like the recoil impulse. I don't like the trigger. I don't really like the controls on it very much either. Um, if you wanted to get one of these guns, you really need to practice with it a lot. Uh, in order to be able to operate these controls well and to operate them quickly and to reload it quickly and to shoot it well and have fast splits, you're gonna have to practice a lot with this gun to get good at shooting it. One other thing I wanna say is if you see people out there online trying to flex their TP9s, just know that it's a hot pile of garbage. At the end of the day, I guess it doesn't suck, but it's definitely not good. If you want a gun with a trash trigger that you're gonna shoot like shit, just get a Glock. This will actually make you better. Um. <laughs> Do not buy this gun. Don't Do buy not, it. don't. Yeah, so fucking much. Yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? Especially SBR. Oh, so fucking hot. Do not put that in. That's so fucking hot. This. But is this like a Secret Service gun? I mean, who fucking even uses this? Does anyone? I use it in Modern Nobody's Warfare. Nobody's smart. Too. I use it in Modern Warfare. <laughs> it's so good in Modern Warfare. You can just break this off. That would be amazing if you just broke it on the <laughs> That would not be amazing. <laughs> My, <laughs> idiot. My final thoughts on this gun are that I hate it. I don't think it's a very good gun. God damn it. Stop. Here in Switzerland for the BNT, we make the trigger really long for so that the sighting may good uh, drop on the target again better. When you shoot this, C-clamp. Or... I can't okay. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking split it like Star Wars. Oh, no. <laughs> Shut up. Welcome to Gun Thoughts.